Hi everybody and welcome back, well, to K-Tapes. It's been already a full month, if not more, uh, so I guess you guys are expecting me to show you a ton of great tapes. Well, uh, I think, I think yes, <laughs> I think it's that time. Uh, maybe nothing like too fantastic, otherwise I would have showed you like uh, before that. So I'm, I'm just accumulating some tapes to show you. Uh, this video can be, I think, a little bit long be simply because I have a full box of stuff to show you. Uh, and also I sold other tapes on the side. And anyway, it's a great thing because they're like uh, late releases and most of them you've seen them in the past. So I was just, I would just be, you know, like showing you tapes you've seen before, which is not all the time very interesting. Unless it's the first time you're watching my videos, then it's all new. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm gonna, you know what, uh, let's get started because like I said, this is gonna take some time. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna do some bundles in here, just, uh, you know, just to, 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 get, to get this going a little bit faster. Because uh, like I said, I have a full box of tapes to show you. Uh, so the first batch right here, as you notice, is, uh, well, it's Rambo 1, 2, and 3. Um, what's so special about these tapes? Well, uh, I mean, it's the first, if it's the first time you've seen them, I mean, they're really cool tapes. Even myself, when I saw them for the first time, I was like, oh, wow, those are really cool covers. Especially part 3 is, is really kick-ass. Um, and by the way, there's part 4. Um, that was released in 2008, I believe, that got a Korean release. Sadly, I don't have it in stock. I just have one, the, the first, I mean, the original trilogy. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, what's special about this uh, set right here, the reason I picked it up again is because it's getting hard to find the original Rambo tape uh, in the wild. So when I saw this, I kind of just jumped on them and the price was great. So that's another big reason why I picked them up. And another thing also, uh, the first part, well, they're all released by the company called uh, BP right here. And uh, the cool thing is the first, the first movie um, is, un I mean, the spine is unfaded. So that is such a huge plus, as you can see very beautiful spine unfaded so this this copy is actually minty uh, even if i show you inside let me get here even says rambo one in case you're not sure so there you go and well the other tapes are also like minty inside uh but it's just like it does have like a bit of sun fade on the spine but nothing too drastic i mean it's kind of like your usual expectation when it comes to sun fade uh, but generally speaking, they're all like the three of them are really beautiful copies, I should say, uh, with some really fun uh, images on the back, some really cool screenshots, and so on. So, there you have it. So, Rambo 1, 2, and 3. So, original, original three films. And this, of course, will be for sale. Um, I posted a bunch of those already for sale, so if you've seen my, um, my posts originally, then I, I guess you, you've seen all the stuff or almost everything I'm going to show you today. Uh, it's just because I was a bit behind with showing you the tapes. Uh, I, I was busy doing other stuff. Um, anyway, so today is the day, I guess. Uh, but yeah, yeah, if you've seen my previous post of like when I'm selling the tapes, maybe most of the things I'm going to show you today, you've seen it before uh, the next one I have is Rocky the first one this is not something I would have bought like normally because as you know I usually go for like horror movies cult films science fiction stuff like that weird Asian films of course uh, so Rocky would never be in like one of my first picks uh, although this copy is mint uh, and that's the only reason why I went for it uh, so as you see, like no sun fade whatsoever. Even the clamshell is like, as you can see, it's like pretty shiny, pretty clean. It's the original SKC clamshell as well. Uh, so here's the back. So yeah, this is the only reason I picked this one up is because it was so clean. I mean, even the tape, I didn't, 
I didn't even have to, to clean the tape. It was that clean when I picked it up. Um, so yeah, this is a gorgeous copy. I mean, if you're a fan of Stallone or the Rocky series, and uh, you really want to co collect all the versions around the world and you, you're missing the Korean one, well, here it is. It is up for sale. All right, uh, let's move on to do, 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 another SKC tape. Uh, this one was kind of like a special request from s someone. Uh, although he's, I think he's, I'm not sure if he's gonna take it or not. I, th I think the person didn't have the money at the time, uh, which is fine. I mean, whatever, like I, I was gonna pick it up anyway, uh, or maybe if someone else is interested in, in the meantime. Uh, so this is hardware really interesting cover also back cover is pretty unique and you have the robot right here in red and i don't know what lemmy is doing is he in the movie i don't even remember i've seen this film once and i kind of really liked it but i never watched it afterward and i think it's been like over 12 years or 10 years at least since i've seen it so i don't kind of remember if lemmy was in it or not or i mean if this screenshot is from the film or not i don't remember i my guess would be no but yeah, anyway, so uh, hardware on the SKC label, of course, beautiful copy, original clamshell, does have a bit of sun fade as expected, as usual, uh, but this is not that easy to find nowadays. I, there was a time where I used to see it like quite often here and there. I even had at once a mint copy of this, like totally mint. Uh, but yeah, that was like, again, 10 years ago, uh, and now it's not the case anymore. So this is kind of cool to get. Anyway, uh, if it interests anyone, this will be up for grabs. Okay, next I have something. Uh, this, I picked this up online. Again, very glad because the, um, the clamshell, which is quite unusual because it's a, uh, a Deu clamshell, but a green one. And those are kind of hard to find because um, every time you see these tapes it's either like the original clamshell this green one but all beat up and all ripped out and things like that or it's a smaller size green clamshell which is super specific I think I showed it to you in the past uh, but to have one of um, normal size like this one in such a clean condition is like wow this this is mind-blowing uh, the film yeah well I totally forgot about the film. The film is Visiting Hours, uh, if I do remember, is a Canadian film uh, directed by a Quebec uh, director, uh, which I do forgot the name. <laughs> I do forget the name. Um, yeah, and it's with Michael Ironside. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of like horror hospital type of film, I think. I've never seen it, to be honest, but it's always something like... I remember the, the original... Um, I was gonna say clamshell the original artwork for the um, the western release which had the hospital and all the lights in the rooms were making like a skull that was kind of really kind of scary when i was young or i would pick that up and be like "Ooh, what is this film anyway visiting hours korean release uh by the way very rare uh it's the first time i picked this up ever i've never seen this in oh, i don't remember like seeing this in the past or at least it wasn't in decent shape enough to uh, for me to pick it up uh, so this is a first and also again some sun fade as expected okay let's move on um this i sold a copy of this recently and i was like absolutely thrilled to find another copy actually pretty much a week I, after i sold my my last copy <laughs> so it was like wow how come I, I i did find one it's like you know those odds uh in life i guess uh so yeah another copy of dark day express this is quite rare um and what i'm really proud of this copy is that it i mean the sleeve is super clean and well yes there's sun fade as you can notice here the yellow is not quite yellow but otherwise everything else is very like nice there's not much sun fade on the red itself well, it's a little bit pinkish but not too much um anyway it's, it's perhaps one of the best if not the best copy i found of this film um overall i mean the sleeve is very clean and also it's the original clamshell by silver screen which is always a plus to have 
And as you can see, the tape is super clean as well. So this was very, like when I saw that, actually I bought that online, uh, but there was only a picture of the front. So there was no way to know about anything else about this tape. Was the tape in good shape, super moldy, the spine all sun faded, the back all ripped, no way to know that. So I was super lucky with this one. It was a blind buy again. Okay, next, this is something I received recently and that I tried to purchase, I think, on three different occasions with blind buys, that is. Uh, and the two previous times I bought this, I got a moldy copy, which I had to throw in the trash. Same thing for the sleeve. The sleeve was totally trash. It looked good on a photo, but when I received it, it was, it was just garbage. Uh, this one is, I mean, the sleeve isn't like that great, to be fair. Like, if you look at the top, it's, it's, like it, because it was sticking out right of the of the clamshell so that's why it's all like beat up like this sadly but it's i mean it's it's borderline i would say if you're a collector it's annoying but the back is uh it's a bit the same story right here although inside there's no like mold in in the um, you see well this is a little bit of like thing here but that's 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 actually normal for a tape of that age in south korea that is <laughs> um but yeah otherwise um the tape itself is is clean so that is the big plus because the other copies i found the tape was totally trash totally moldy nothing to do impossible to clean up whatsoever so this one is pretty much the first one i find uh that is um it, it's somehow salvageable beside the cover that is a bit beat up but at least it's complete uh, well, it has some sun fade, of course. And this film is quite rare, by the way. Even more rare, uh, thinking that, like I said, three times I bought it and it was trash. <laughs> so this is like the third or even like the fourth time I buy it. And finally, I do get a decent cop working copy of this movie. So it's a Hong Kong film from the early 80s. Uh, I think like there's probably a, a Chinese release of this but not much more. It's quite rare. So yeah, Four Rubbers, that's the uh, title. Okay, next also something I bought recently, another one, uh, another blind buy. Um, I kind of knew the spine wouldn't be too great. As you can see, it's really, this is actually quite sun faded. Um, I didn't expect it to be that sun faded, but I mean, what can you do? Uh, and this is uh, the Raiders of Atlantis. Uh, it's quite hard to find. Um, so besides the sun fade on the spine, the rest is okay. Um, I mean, the sleeve itself doesn't have any more, any damage like, well, like you've seen on the four rubbers, right? Uh, so yeah, other than the sun fade, everything is fine. The tape itself is very clean. So, and it's in his original DNS clamshell. So that is always good. Let me focus, see the pictures on the back. With Christopher Conley. So there you go. Raiders of Atlantis or Raiders 1994. Okay, next we have um, a film called Thunderbolt Mission, but this could be misleading because there's a film called Mission Thunderbolt from the early 80s. I think it's like a Godfrey Ho production or IFD production. I mean, same thing, right? Uh, but that's not that film. It's another film. It's actually a, um, oh my God. Now that I, I'm showing this one to you, I totally forget about the information. Uh, but it's a uh, Southeast Asian co-production. I think it was Thailand and Hong Kong co-production. Um, and the, the original film is called Kaplan O or something like that. Anyway, it's a very rare film. Uh, so that's why I bought it. Again, another thing, the sun fade a little bit, although it has this kind of foil cover, like gold foil. So it doesn't affect the title on the side. Uh, although like see the red is pink. So there you go for the sun fade, but it's, it's not too distracting, I would say. And once again, this film is extremely uh, rare. I only had it once in the past uh, and I sold it immediately. So this is kind of like my second copy I was able to get. Uh, yeah, and it's up for sale if it's your type of film. 
I mean, if you're into rare films, this is surely one to get. Speaking of rare films, this is the kind of tape I should have kept for last, but it's right next to me, so I'm picking it up right now. Guys, this is Combat Shock. Actually, I had dreams of picking this one up at some point. Because since I've seen it in a magazine, uh, or, or someone's photo, I was like, oh my god, Comeback Shock exists on Korean tape. Oh my god, I need to find this. And finally, I found it. Um, and once again, this was some sort of blind buy, because once again, picture of the front, there was a picture of the cassette itself, there was no picture of the back, no picture of the spine, and the spine is always the thing that you are looking for, because this is where the sun fade will occur. I mean, if you have sun fade on the front, it would be extremely bad, because this actually kind of never happens. It's always the spine, with Korean tapes especially. So look at this, the spine is actually I mean, it may have some sun fade, but to me, it looks pretty, pretty neat. Uh, the red is red. I mean, let me just uh, focus a bit more, maybe because it, this is a tape that may interest more than one person. If I can just focus, here you go. So you can see the red here and the red on the cover. It may be like, I mean, the, the um, degraded here is normal. This is normal here. You may just see some pinkish here, but here is more like salmon pink uh, orange ish so there might be a bit of sun fade I mean I'm not gonna lie um, but it's it's very minimal and this I mean for this title I'm not gonna say who cares but almost who cares because this is very rare and let me just uh, point out one more thing it's SKC but it's SKC uh, from the 80s uh, SKC from the 90s is a bit easier to find but anything SKC from the uh, the late 80s because this is kind of like when they were like uh, started up pretty much mid to I'm um, no sorry pretty much like early 80s but the late 80s those films are super hard to find uh, let me just point out one thing also SKC late 80s you have pretty much all the um, uh, not Thailand uh, well uh, Indonesian films, so stuff like uh, The Snake Queen, uh, uh, Samson, uh, stuff like that, it's all SKC from that same era. So anything from the, the collection of that same era, like you, you see it once, you don't see it twice. Or if you do see it, it will be like four years, five years later, maybe, in what shape, in what, what condition, I don't know. Uh, just like, for example, Satan's Bed, which is another Indonesian film. I've ever found only one copy of that, and it's exactly the same thing, SKC from the late 80s. So, Comeback Shock, same kind of collection, same era, same label. Uh, and you even have, like, fun thing here is you have the, let me focus, uh, the Troma logo. So, at the time, this was, yeah, of course, distributed by Troma, and <clears throat> they did have their logo right here, even on the Korean tape which is quite interesting. Uh, let me show you the back here, quite gruesome, that's cool. So, yeah. Okay, it says like 2080, no, it's, it's not from 2000, of course, it says 1988, right here. So, yeah, uh, so yeah, this is a, uh, it's perhaps the best, or if not the rarest tape I have in everything I'm gonna show you today. Or not, I don't know. I don't remember what I have in my box. I have so many tapes. Okay, let's go quickly. Uh, this one is, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> this one is something I uh, got again online. Again with the sun fade, but this is quite rare. Uh, it's called uh, Fairy of the Night. And it's a Korean film uh, directed by um, Nam Gi Nam who, by the way, I made an interview with the director a few years back, and sadly it was just about like five months before he passed away, so it was pretty much his last interview. Um, so anyway, I, I well, if you speak Korean, I recommend you to watch it. If not, sadly there are no English subtitles now, yet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's a very uh, rare interview um, with him. So anyway, uh, going back to the film, this is a horror film. Although that's the thing with this era in South Korea with um, 
with horror films is that they all look like erotic films. Uh, well, you look at the cover, you think this is a drama, this might be an erotic film. No, it's a horror movie. Uh, so yeah, it's one of the few horror films, uh, Korean horror films of that era. And yeah, this copy is actually very beautiful. Beside, I mean, the sun fade, the tape itself, um, the, the whole sleeve is very clean also. And it's not the original clamshell. I do have a clamshell from Aju, uh, which I will swap uh, actually later on. I'm gonna put this aside so I don't forget. Okay, next uh, I have a Umberto Lenzi film called Operation Extermination. Operacion Exterminacion. Uh, or something like that. Uh, I'm just making this up, by the way. Uh, so yeah, it says Unbelt Lenze. So yeah, this is Umberto Lenzi, which his name has been butchered on the cover. And it's, by the way, a small clamshell, as you can see here. So this is the rare stuff in Korea. This is the, uh, the things that usually um, collectors are after. They really love those small clamshells. And I didn't know that Tony Montana was uh, part of this film, but apparently he is. Um, and other like ladies here, which are probably from other films as well. Uh, but this is quite rare film, small clamshell once again, and in great shape, great copy, uh, which I'm really happy to own and will be up for sale. Okay, um, quickly here we have some late releases. I'm just gonna be doing a bundle of the late releases because uh, I wanna move on uh, with this stuff. Okay, uh, because some of that stuff, I, I showed it to you before. So we have, of course, Die Hard 4. Uh, I think I had a copy in the past. I probably still have one in my boxes, but this one is pretty near mint. I mean, you see the blue here is blue. is not like getting baby blue color. So I think this is kind of an upgrade from the other copy I have. So that's why I picked it up. Uh, and I always go for those late releases these days. Here we have two Harry Potters. We have Harry Potter 5 and here Harry Potter 4. Uh, those are among the three Harry Potters that didn't come out in North America on VHS. So part 4, part 5 and there's also a part 6 which I had but I sold about two and a half weeks ago and I didn't make a video before sending it out. Uh, so the person who received it can actually uh, make a video about it and it'll be kind of a premiere because uh, I kind of skipped this one, I was too busy. Um, so yeah, a good uh, customer of mine who bought it in the United States. And uh, by the way, I think it was also a double, not I think, it is a uh, double tape. Uh, so yeah, four, five and six are two tapes each. So here you go for the Harry Potter tapes. See, this is the back. I know it's not very like creative, right? They, they, they put like twice the same image. It's always the same thing. Those who actually, the Korean tapes who actually have like two different covers are extremely rare. I mean, for like a double tape uh, version. It's really, I like I kept saying, I've seen that only perhaps for Batman, The Dark Knight, that have like two different covers for each of the two tapes for that one film. Every other movies, same, same artwork besides the part one, part two here on the side. Okay, next, uh, yeah. Oh, this one, I was really proud of it. Uh, this is one I found in the wild. Wow, for a change. Because uh, like I said, everything I bought recently was all picked up from the internet pretty much. Uh, but this was a quite good surprise. Although, yeah, it does have like a little scuff here, like some damage here, but not too... I mean, I can live with this. I mean, now I mean, stuff is getting too rare to find. Uh, but otherwise, this is a quite good copy. And uh, well, it's The Orphan. Uh, yeah, and it's a tape actually from January 2010. See, this is January 2010. This is the last year they made VHS tapes in Korea. And should I say, I mean, the world, because uh, uh, I didn't come in across any other countries that made tapes, I think, beyond 2007 or 8, except South Korea. I mean, prove me wrong, someone, please. I would love to. <laughs> Write down in the comments down below if you've seen, like, tapes from other countries that went over 2006. I know there were a few, at least 2007, but beyond 2008, yeah, not too sure. So to have South Korea going 
wait till the end of 2010 is kind of like, wow, uh, it's unique. Well, let's, let's face it, it is unique. Uh, so here you have the Orphan. There's actually an Orphan 2 that came out, uh, I think a year ago, which I've never seen. I don't know if it's any good. I think it's probably trash, but the first movie was good. Okay. Uh, do I have other late releases? I just want to pull out these like, since we'll have them out of the way and they will just be, I mean, if, if you're watching this video only for the late releases, I mean, you cannot check them all out. Uh, I, I won't make you, you know, like scroll through the whole video to check them out. Uh, so anyway, yeah, next we have Happy Feet which is another tape uh, that didn't come out. I mean, another movie that didn't come out in North America. So, I mean, on videotape, it didn't come out in North America. So this is 2007. And uh, the cool thing about it would be like, okay, but why do you have like two copies uh, other than, oh, I'm buying copies to sell them back. Uh, well, if you look closely on the spine here, because one is in English and one is in Korean. So one is in dubbed in Korean, the other one is in English with Korean subs. So that's why you have these things here and also on the front right here. So it says uh, Korean language or in English with Korean subs. Uh, other than that, it is exactly the same cover for both. And they're all in top shape as well. Of course, well, they're late releases, so they, they got to be in good shape. And they both have the uh, Warner original clamshell, which is a huge plus with these tapes. Okay, uh, speaking of animals and animation, let's keep it up with Surf's Up. Uh, I think this was quite in demand at some point. I don't know now, uh, but I did see a copy of it. Sadly, it's, it's, uh, it's in Korean. Uh, it's not in English. Uh, well, it's... No, yeah, it's, it is dubbed in Korean. Uh, so yeah, I picked it up anyway. Uh, it's, it's a decent copy. It does have some sun fade, sadly, but those things are, I mean, when I see them, I pick them up because they're usually priced fairly. And uh, yeah, I guess yeah, they're getting harder to find. So yeah, surf's up. And this is of course for sale. Uh, what else do we have? More animation for you guys. Uh, we have, I uh, forgot what is this one, because there's no English title and I did forget. Edge? No. I think it's Edge. Anyway, sorry, I'm not into the animation, as you can see. This, uh, I, I was a bit too old for this stuff at the time. Although I know Cars. I didn't see it, but I know what it is. Um, so yeah, Cars is uh, apparently, uh, according to a friend of mine who's also selling tapes, uh, apparently there's a quite a demand for Cars on Korean tape. I didn't know that. Uh, I have this one, it's not expensive. Uh, if you do want it, it's for you. I mean, pick it up. Although it does have like some sun fade, I'm not gonna lie. Right here, you can see the green is not quite green. And this is a dubbed version, so it's Korean dub. Uh, but yeah, the price is fine. Uh, if it's something you want, you don't wanna pay a fortune. I have it for a decent price. Uh, so yeah, cards. And I think, like I said, this one is called edge 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 of i forgot anyway never mind uh it's gonna be for sale uh this one is blind blindness um I, I i still have my other copy although i think this one is absolutely unfaded which is the reason why i picked it up and also because it's a 2009 film it's a very good film by the way uh one more reason why i picked it up uh, sadly, my other copy didn't sell yet. Uh, I guess no one's interested yet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I did pick this one up anyway because the price was fine. And like I said, it's such a great film. Uh, so it may interest someone in the near future. I'm just looking, by the way, at the date. And it's uh, February 2009, if you are wondering. So yeah. Oh, and it's uh, the original clamshell, like you can see with, with the reflection here, the IV. If I check on the spine, there you go. Or is it? Oh no, it's not the original clamshell. I think it was, I changed it because it was busted up, but I don't think there were, there is a clamshell for that label. I think it's just a blank one, like 
transparent one so i just took another transparent one anyway uh let's move on okay uh this one i have it already in stock i think i have one copy only perhaps two one which is great the other one is okay uh this one is actually really bad uh and for that reason i'm really selling it for cheap uh it's quite rare film well you'll say well you have two copies it's not that rare well i have them like for some quite some time as well uh but for for some time like i said it was hard to find this film i would find a copy every three years or something so when i saw this one i'm like yeah why not i'll pick it up uh, again was the price fine it was okay ish but yeah other than the, the the cover which is actually really in bad shape uh the tape itself is very clean um so yeah oh and it's also by the way the original crime shell as you can see star max and this is the star max label so you do get the original clam shell in good condition you get your the tape in good condition which is the most important thing of course but sadly yeah the um uh the sleeve is really in bad shape as you can see here like there was like some um humidity so with the not the fusion well the fusion i mean it it got fused to the plastic uh, so that's why it kind of ripped there was no way for me to you know avoid this i tried to be like super careful with the rest of the uh, of the sleeve but yeah as you can see it's really not in good shape and there's like this water damage here uh so yeah that's why I'm, I'm gonna be letting this one go for cheap but if you're into like rare horror films uh this is kind of like again unless pro proven wrong this is perhaps the first gore korean film uh which came out early to i think it's 2000 or 2001 you see like the gore here here as well uh some more like gory scenes here uh, and this film never came out in South Korea on DVD. So the only copy that exists is videotape. There could be a VCD, uh, but I've never encounter encountered one. But I'm not going to say it doesn't exist. I don't know. Uh, but to my knowledge, there's only been tapes, tape releases of this film. And it's getting quite hard to find, which is the reason why I picked it up. Okay, let's move on. We have not one but two copies and i did sell one already um i couldn't pass this up uh, simply because it's super hard to find nowadays i did find maybe two copies before that but they were like five years uh in between uh one was in decent shape the other one was okay ish uh, but i did find from a shop he had three copies i just went crazy i picked them all up because I know I'm not going to find this ever again or it's going to take some time. Uh, again, you never say never, but uh, it's hard to find. As you can see, this one is like doesn't have any sun fade. It's my only mint copy. This one does have a tiny bit of sun fade. Uh, I'm not asking too crazy price for this. Um, by, by the way, it's Faces of Death, uh, the first movie. Uh, yeah, so well, I mean, there's nothing else to say about this. Uh, oh yeah, and by the way, this one has uh, the one that is near mint. Uh, let me focus here. Has the original clamshell. This is actually very rare. I didn't know this label had their original clamshell. This one isn't, but yeah. So you see the label here on the spine. It's the same. So this is the uh, original clamshell for this release. Uh, yeah, faces of that. Two copies, both for sale. Okay, next, uh, two movies by uh, Steven Spielberg, uh, Jaws and of course E.T. I don't even need to mention, you can, you can, you know these covers, right? Uh, they're in really good shape. I mean, E.T. is pretty mint, Jaws got some sun fade, but overall, I mean, these are CI, CIC releases and what, what happens with those is, you know, the, the sleeves always sticks out of the plastic and this gets like super easily damaged and as you can see those tapes don't have or barely have any damage uh, which is uh, very very rare because uh, they they are always damaged usually um, so I mean I would qualify those tapes as really top shape uh, considering uh, that fact uh, 
Um, so yeah, there you go, Jaws and E.T., uh, both in top shape, both in their original CIC clamshells, and uh, both are like this, uh, no mold, nothing, near mint, beautiful copies. Okay, uh, next we have uh, something I showed you in the past. Uh, it's called Trauma, um, Italian film, uh, not to be confused with Trauma, the uh, Dario Argento film, but this is another another film uh, is it italian or spanish i think it is italian well i mean gianni martucci that sounds italian to me uh, the clamshell is the original clamshell that's why i didn't swap it even though it does have like some damage the damage you see on the clamshell right here and right here doesn't affect the sleeve itself the sleeve is is pretty clean uh it's just like yeah this uh other than that the sleeve itself again is very clean a uh, bit of sun fade, not too crazy. Uh, it's it's an overall very beautiful copy, to be fair. Same goes with the cassette inside. It's gorgeous. I mean, look at this with the BPC original clamshell. Very cool. Um, so, yeah. It's been years since I was able to sell a copy of this. I don't know. Maybe the, the demand for it just dropped. I don't know. But it's such a cool cover anyway. Okay, what do we have next? What do we have? So many tapes. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about this. Uh, here we have a copy of Just Before Dawn. Uh, this is actually quite hard to find now, especially in good shape. I did see maybe two in the past three years pass by, you know? And the two copies were just trash, uh, so I didn't buy them. One had like terrible water damage. And the other one, I think the, the back cover was all ripped. Uh, and that goes without saying it. the tape, I think, was just garbage. Uh, nothing. I, I couldn't salvage any, any of those two copies. So this is just the, the first one I do find that is very, very clean, very beautiful. I wouldn't say it's the original clamshell, though. Um, but yeah, it's a, a De Young uh, copy. It does have a bit of sun fade, uh, I'm not gonna lie, once again, you know, it's supposed to be more reddish orangey and it looks more, a bit pink. Um, yeah, if you're very picky, you'll be like, ah, oh, this is pink, but I mean, this is old, by the way, those tapes are like, uh, yeah, 1987, it's, it's, it's not young. Um, and the other copy I have had like some damage at the bottom here So this is pretty much the best copy I've ever found uh, and I only have another copy in stock which I've never sold before I think I uh, Now that I think of it, I think I did sell one copy in the past So this is kind of like my third copy, but we're talking about like 12 years So three copies in 12 years is like a copy every four years. It's it's not very good uh, so I qualify this as a very rare tape. Okay. All right. We have uh, next. We have Dead Chase. Uh, I bought this uh, simply because of the director, which is the director I always keep forgetting his name. Uh, the guy who made um, oh my god, uh, Dead no, not Dead Spa, <laughs> uh, Deadly. Aerobic, uh, aer uh, aerobicide, that's the name in French. It aerobicide, beside, uh, sorry, my terrible English tonight. Um, David A. Pryor, I think that's it. Yeah, uh, Mr. Pryor. Hey, there you go. Uh, so it's a movie by him, same director. The guy also made uh, Men Killer, and uh, the other the other movie I keep forgetting again. With the Rambo style dude. Uh, Deadly Prey. That's it. Whew, okay. So yeah. The same director. So he made this film. Uh, it's a little bit more underground. I think. I don't know if many people like it. Uh, that's the only reason I bought this tape. Because once again. Look at this spine. It's extremely sun faded. It's, it's no joke. And when I saw that. I was so heartbroken. Because I've never bought this tape before it's the first time i do find this title so i was really happy but when i saw this one i was like ah oh, shit uh but i went for it anyway uh, i'm not asking asking too much money for it considering it's quite hard to find also i'm gonna be honest here you see this looks to me like it was like cropped 
here someone i don't know took took a a, a cutter box cutter or something or, and look it's not even even it's it's like it's like looks like crooked here uh so this is this is to me this is bad um i hate this i hate this like i i didn't encounter this kind of thing like really often and even sometimes i i didn't even notice because you know with the korean vhs tapes what happens is the, even the clamshells have different sizes. Sometimes it's, it's, it's like a millimeter. It's next to nothing. But it's not like, let's say I would take, uh, I don't know, like Pirate of the Caribbean videotape and swap it to a Texas Chainsaw Massacre clamshell and it's gonna fit. Maybe it's just that millimeter too big. And if I put the this, this sleeve inside, it's gonna be all wavy because it doesn't fit. So they have like this weird, like un... Um, like it's it's not made like a, not on measure. What I'm I for, I'm forgetting the words here. Um, they don't have like the same the same template of, uh, of of clamshells. That's what I mean. So they all make their own like specificity, specific size, and they can have like a little little difference. Same thing with the sleeves. I guess some make them like shorter here. Some make them like really tight to the edge. Uh, so yeah, I mean. It, it, it is what it is so uh there you go anyway uh, this is dead chase and most importantly again the tape is clean that's the most important thing uh the sleeve is what it is and uh yeah that's it so okay uh, next i have uh, nightmare beach uh, i've never seen this before this is the first time i picked this one up again not in top shape because see it's like wavy here uh, might have had some um, humidity in the in the sleeve like here it's gonna like it's got ripped a little bit uh, but other than that and the sun fade which is a bit bad uh, this tape is rare uh, so that's why I picked it up but thankfully the tape itself is clean uh, it's just a question about the sleeve again depending on how um, how specific you are about your collection if you really want like pristine mint copies or you don't care uh anyway regardless of that this tape is super rare first time i find it so i mean i have nothing else to compare it to it's kind of like the other the only one i found uh okay oh next uh this is another big one uh here we have samurai cup and you know i showed you this tape a couple of times because i did find it like a, a few copies in the past uh it has this odd uh, rename a title of Rambo Cop, which is actually super funny. Uh, but this one is more like geared towards like the 90s, like terrible Photoshop, you know, artwork. It's actually ugly, I think, but it's cool, ugly, uh, cool, ugly 90s. Uh, so you have Police Cup, Action Cup, Samurai Cup, and you have this muscle dude, which is not even in the movie, with like like a medieval like sword. It's not even like a ninja sword it's just like a big sword anyway uh, but the back is obviously samurai cup you have scenes of the movie right here as well samurai cup on the highway why not like ghosts here i don't know like like ufos uh anyway it's it's like a big weird mashup cover uh yeah and there you have the tape let me show you which is fun because you have like of course the same image on the cover that you have on the tape itself uh the tape is in great shape uh and this is a one of a time by the way i did it's the first time i do find this uh variant of the cover so there's the samurai cup which is rambo cup which i found like a bunch of times it's not like that crazy rare it is now that i don't have any more in stock uh but uh yeah that one is is i would say co more common this one is ultra rare because it's the only time i found it is this copy that's it and it's on a uh, a label cine feel it's 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 a label i don't even know i don't i i've never seen other t movies on that label maybe they were not like horror films or whatnot that's why i never encountered it or paid attention uh, so they were like comedies and stuff like that but i i do not remember seeing this label anywhere else so that would make sense why it's kind of really rare. Um, so there you have it. Samurai Cup, the unique variant from South Korea. Uh, it's a bit pricey, but I mean, if you want it, uh, there you, there's your chance. Because I don't know if I'm going to ever find this again. 
Okay. Next we have uh, Haunts. Haunts. Um, another movie I've never seen, but the cover is super cool. Again, the side, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit some damage at the bottom. The sun fade isn't too drastic. Other than that, the copy is pretty clean. It's pretty okay. I mean, the cover is also really nice. Uh, and it comes in its original life uh, clamshell here. Life. And let me show you inside. See, and you have like the big life clamshell, that super cool baby blue clamshell. I love those clamshells, by the way. And again, the clamshell is really clean. I mean, yeah, I know. Sorry, it has like this kind of kind of damage here. Maybe it was like like slide on something, but other other than that, it's 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 pretty nice. Yeah, it's not ripped or anything, so that's cool. Because those are usually easily ripped on the corners here. It peels off. Uh, and this one isn't, so yeah, a huge plus. Okay, uh, we have a handful of tapes left. Um, I told you this was gonna be a long one. I hope it's not gonna go over an hour. Uh, it's already on the 45 minutes mark. Uh, no, I guess not, because we have six more tapes and some I think you've seen before, so I'm gonna go quickly. Uh, so the first one is uh, Tigress of Siberia, so Ilsa film. Uh, this one is a beautiful copy. I wouldn't say it's near mint. I mean, the, yeah, this one is kind of near mint, but it's not near mint sun fade wise, okay? Because as you can see here, well, you have a very good, if I can just focus, you have a very good indication of the yellow it used to be like this. Now it's like this, of course, because there was a sticker here covering and when I peel it off, it revealed its original color. Uh, so the red hasn't been like touched too much because it was like red pink ish. This pink is normal, by the way. See, even the front is pink. Uh, but this red is kind of not really, you know, see, it really is just the yellow. So it is a very good copy overall. And one thing also is that the Ilsa title is always, always, always at you know like flush at the top and depending on 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 the copy you get i guess uh considering like the machinery at the time and when they were printing those covers some is cropped a little bit below this this, this you know the little uh, i don't know how you call that uh, the little edge of the eye here where it curves so it's like a millimeter down so it looks like your your title is cropped even there it looks like it's cropped because it is cropped but I mean, there was, there's no information above. I mean, I'm sure the cutting line was somewhere around here when they, uh, they made those sleeves. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like, regardless of that, they were like, oh, let's just crop it there. Uh, Cause otherwise the sleeve would stick out of the box, right? Uh, Cause it fits like perfectly like that. So anyway, speaking of this, this is one of the uh, very few that uh, copies I've seen where the title isn't too cropped at the type. Uh, at, the at the top, uh, considering the type of sleeve that it is. All right. Okay, let's move on. Um, next, oh, this is kind of rare. Um, I don't know if it's a title that would interest anyone uh, besides my good friend Steve uh, in, uh, in Pittsburgh. Uh, but other than him, uh, this is a, of course, Rome Violent City, uh, one of those like Italian uh, mobster gangster film. Uh, violent police film again with like some sexy ladies and stuff and lots of violence I mean the way we like them right those those violent Italian films from the 70s uh, does have some sun fade a little like spot here like a uh, kind of a stain here uh, yeah but other than that I mean the cover is really cool um, so yeah that's the only reason I picked it up I, I really like the cover again the price was fine so yeah and here, let me show you the tape, and it's in, in its, in its original clamshell. Yes. So see the same label. Okay. Uh, next, I have a. This is a Brian De Palma film that I really like, by the way. When I was studying cinema, uh, I've seen this uh, in. Uh, I wouldn't say in theater, but in my class. So they had like a film copy of the of the film. Uh, so we we got to watch it. It was really good, uh, really good director. I love I love his movies. 
Um, so yeah, Dress to Kill, um, again, a beautiful copy. I would say it's almost near mint, it's probably near mint, unfaded, looks unfaded to me. I mean, could have like a bit of sun fade, but very minimal. Other than that, I mean, yeah, you could say like, oh, it's not yellow, but I think it's supposed to match the front, so that's fine. Um, yeah, amazing film, and uh, yeah, the copy is beautiful. And let me show you the cassette as well. Great copy. So, yeah. if, it, if this interests someone, this will go for sale. Okay, we have three more. Uh, this one is uh, was kind of a blind buy, and by that I mean I found that when I was in Dejan in a video store. Uh, I didn't know the tape. I mean, I didn't know the movie. I just found it like really super late 80s, early 90s action flick. Looked to me like a straight to video. I think it is actually. I think this is a straight to video film. That's the only reason I picked it up. Because uh, I know some people are after the uh, straight to video films. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just like I, I picked it up because it to me looked good. Uh, the cover is also in great shape. The tape was in great shape. And um, the original, it comes with the original clamshell. You see the matching color, which is so nice. Uh, so yeah, that's why I picked it up. And it's called the Mosaic Project. Mosaic Project looks like super B-style action film uh, from, uh, let me check, 1994. So it could very well be a straight to video, but I'm not 100% sure about this. Okay, next we have Striker. I think this is a, um, Santiago, Sirio H. Santiago, well, it says it like right here, Sirio H. Santiago, Santiago film uh, from the early 80s, perhaps even late 70s. Uh, I don't think it's a very rare film. Well, it says 1987 for the uh, tape release, for this release. Usually it comes in a small clamshell. As you can see, you have this paper that comes on the back uh, to fill out the, the space of this normal clamshell. Um, great thing also, it's a torn EMI um, South Korean release, uh, really. And this is the back released by Gold Star in South Korea. Let me show you the pictures on the back, which is really nice. Yeah. So I think it's uh, from the genre, it looks like a post apocalyptic Mad Max ripoff style made in the Philippines, I guess. Uh, so yeah, this is also for sale. And if you want to see, here is the tape, also in beautiful condition. All right, and we're down to our last tape. This is a rare one which I sold in the past. Uh, it sold actually pretty fast. So when I did find another copy, I was super happy. It's none other than Karate Warrior 4. Uh, and you would be like, okay, yeah, but it's not like that crazy rare. You are right. But this copy is actually dubbed in English because I think all the other copies are not in English. Uh, so this is what makes this release so uh, rare and I would say valuable and collectible. Other than this copy, there might be like I think another release in the world which is also dubbed in English. But the, I think the print is not that great. But the print apparently on this copy, for what I remember, is really nice. And it's dubbed in, it is the original, uh, I think it's the original language is English. So anyway, it's an English friendly copy, uh, English speaking copy of Karate Warrior 4. Uh, the only other thing though is that the other copy I had was near mint. There was no sun fade whatsoever. This one does have some sun fade. It's kind of like your usual like, you know, I wouldn't say beat up, but uh, condition for Korean tape. Uh, but it's nonetheless it is super rare um, so I was really really happy uh, to find this one and also it comes in its original Yuho uh, clamshell which by the way I, I know I said that like countless times before but if it's your first time in the channel Yuho um, is actually mainly a um, erotica uh, label you know they release pretty much all. It's, it's kind of like the playboy of South Korea but they did release like regular normal films on their label other than erotica uh, and by that i mean like mostly like korean erotica although they had like some playboy stuff as well like north american erotica on their label but nothing porn because there's no porn pornography in uh, south korea uh, so yeah 
Karate Warrior 4. So that's all I have for you today, guys. Um, thank you for watching once again. Uh, let me just uh, put some spines for you. So you could see, I mean, I cannot enter everything in the frame, obviously, because I have so many. Uh, but just so you have, like, whoops, just so you have like a nice, uh, nice little inventory to look at up, to look up at. All right. There you go. I guess that's, that's good. Good enough. Some happy feet at the bottom. There you go. So this is all I have for you. Plus another like 20 on the side here. Uh, so this is all I have for you this week. Uh, I hope you'll be able to buy some of my tapes. <laughs> I don't want to sound desperate or anything, but it's piling up in my room. I did sell a couple recently, but it looks like this year, uh, since I would say maybe February, it's very slow. I don't know if any of you other, other um, guys are selling tapes, uh, perhaps in the States, in Europe. How is it for you? Uh, you can comment down below. Is it slow for you guys as well? Uh, are people not collecting as much these days or perhaps they're waiting for their tax return to be able to just go crazy and buy stuff um, if i speak for myself i do collect some games on the side so of course i do have a bit of money on the side when i sell some tapes so i'm going to grab some games i don't have um, so maybe i mean you same for you you're you're waiting to get like a decent uh, tapes or maybe the prices are too high uh, tapes are just uh, two like big big pieces that are too expensive and you're looking for like cheaper tapes uh, cheaper titles I don't know anyway let me know in the comments I'm, I'm kind of curious about that because last year same time um, so many people were buying tapes but this year looks like a bit like okay what's going on maybe people will pick up more like this summer who knows all right anyway enough it's already been almost a, a, an hour uh, I hope to see you soon. Grab more tapes, good and interesting titles. Hopefully not as many because uh, this uh, video is way too long. Speaking of which, I'm going to cut it off right now. So thanks everyone. Leave a comment, leave a like and see you on the next one.